In the following videos, we are going to learn how to handle exceptions in our RESTful web service application. So let me cause an exception and then run application and see how the response from my RESTful web service looks like. So I will define a string, let's say it's a first name, and then I will assign it to null. And now I will attempt to access this string. Let's, let's assume you have some code here and then you have some code there in your method. And then somewhere in your code, you need to get the length of this first name. So you define integer, let's say first name length, and then you access the first name object and then get the length of this string. And because the first name is assigned to null, this will cause a null pointer exception. So let me run this application and then see what would be the response from my RESTful web service. Okay, my application started. I will now bring Postman. And this is HTTP GET request. I will just send it. And here we go, we have an error message. And I see that the status code is 500, which is internal uh, server error. And the good news is that the error message is already well structured in JSON. And we did not really have to do anything to return this error message back. Error message is well structured. And if I go to headers and if I change accept from application JSON to XML, for example, let's say application XML and send this request again, I get an error message, but this time it is XML representation. So what if we want to handle this error message in our code and then return back an error message of a different structure? Let's say we want to add some fields or we want to remove some fields. We want to return our own custom error message. So how do we do that? The good news is that in Spring Framework, we have a centralized way of handling error messages. We can create one single class, and then in that single class, we can handle any exception that we need. So let's do that. I will go to my um, project, and then I will expand source main Java, and I will create a new class, Java class, and I will call it, let's say, app exceptions handler and i'll put it into a package let me choose uh, one of the packages let's say this one and then i will give it a new name exceptions and i'll click on finish and i will paste a little code snippet i have prepared this class so that i don't have to do much typing and i'll walk you through this class to register this class with the framework and then make it listen for the exceptions that take place in our application across all these um, mapping methods, all this get mapping and post mapping and delete mapping methods, we will have to annotate our class with the controller advice annotation. This is very important. If we do not have this annotation, then this class will not be able to listen for the exceptions that take place in our application. So let me import this controller advice annotation. And now because this class will need to contain some methods that actually handle the exception, the method that handles the exception will need to be annotated with another annotation, which is called exception handler. So let me import exception handler. And now the method that handles exception needs to return back some response. And that response we are returning as response entity. That response entity object will contain headers, so it will contain HTTP status of the response, and it will contain the body of the response, which will be a custom entity, a custom object that we are going to create. So let me import response entity. And because I'm extending a base class, I will also need to import it. This class is used with exception handler classes that wish to provide centralized exception handling across all the request mapping methods. And now I'm going to import web request and I'm going to import headers and HTTP status. So now we have a method that can have any name. I've called this method handle any exception, but you give it a different name. What's important is that this method needs to be annotated with exception handler annotation. And then the value 
for the exception handler annotation needs to be exception class. But if I were to handle a null pointer exception only, for example, or some specific exception, I would need to provide a class of that exception here. Okay, so because I'm providing exception class here, the same data type I'll need to provide here as a method argument. And I'm simply returning back a response entity, which at this moment will contain entire exception stack trace as a body of the response. So I'm taking the exception object and I'm including it as a body of the response. If I open the response entity declaration, I will see that this method takes in body, then it takes in the a multi-value map, which is headers and HTTP status. So let me close it. Uh, and this is it. We now have a centralized place where we can handle our exceptions. I can add many more methods into this class. This one is to handle exception. I can add other methods that will handle specific exceptions. And if I need to add new exception handler, or if I need to debug code that has to do with exceptions, I have one place where I no, I need to go to work with the code that handles exception. So let me save this and let me run this application in a debug mode and see how it works. So I'll put a breakpoint here and now I'll click on debugger icon to debug this application. Okay, my application has started. I'll switch back to Postman and I will send this HTTP request. And here we go, a debugger breakpoint triggered. Let me switch perspective. I'm now in a debug perspective. And here's the execution point, which confirms that my exception handling works, my controller advice class has been registered with the framework to handle um, exceptions, I can simply resume this uh, debugging now, and have a look at the response. I'll switch back to postman. And here we go, I have no pointer exception. It says here, and I have the stack trace, the entire object with the details of the error. And if I change XML to JSON, I will get back the same details, but in JSON format. Let me resume debugging and return back to Postman and I have JSON now. But of course, this representation of the error message is not always what we want to return back. If we want to return back a smaller JSON with only specific details that we want, there is also a way to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the following video.